Hey guys, Abner Miranda here. I wanted to give you guys a quick thought, if I may. I know that firearms training is nerve-wracking, and I want you to know that I appreciate where you're coming from. I get it, been there. What I can tell you is this. You're not alone. Uh, when I first went out to training many years ago, I really was very uncomfortable. Um, I thought, I'm going to... I'm gonna go and I'm gonna lay an egg, and I did. Big deal. Um, but because I trained at Tactical Defense Institute, I was training with people who were very respectful and, and uh, were very understanding of the learning process that you go through as a student. Um, and I have tried my best to espouse that. Well, let me rephrase it. Not that I've tried my best. I espouse that in what I do, how I teach. Um, even if I'm in a position Man, this wind is ridiculous. Even if I'm in a position where I'm not even teaching, I'm just kind of like safety officer, I find myself teaching because I enjoy teaching firearms. Some people are good at fishing, some people are good at you know motorcycle racing, whatever. I'm good at shooting. And I'm good at teaching shooting and teaching the fun and the, the excitement of learning how to put lead on steel. There's nothing more satisfying than ringing steel than um, and then, then launching something downrange that changes the behavior of something else, whether it be a dumb target like this that just sort of stands there and reacts to the hits, or whether it be a criminal who's trying to attack you and a loved one. There's no faster medium to learn on than steel, which is why I shoot steel primarily. In the following weeks, I'm going to be hitting this subject repeatedly. Um, I was talking to someone recently and I said to him, you know, we always hear the term, the enemy is at the door. Guys, the enemy isn't at the door. The enemy is in the house. They're already in. And there's no time. Folks, you've got to learn. Like, uh, like the owner of Bravo Concealment is constantly saying, carry concealed, guys. Carry concealed. And you know what? I'm going to show this to you guys. Um, I've got a uh, drop out of sight torsion holster from Bravo Concealment. Um, I've added a piece of memory foam at the bottom and I've just roughly duct taped it in place. Now, Bravo Concealment, if you're watching this, relax. I'm not about to bag on you guys. There's nothing wrong with this holster. I'm fat, okay? Even though I've shed a lot of weight, I'm fat. I still have a gut. And if you're one of those guys or gals who has a belly on you, the, the memory foam at the bottom pushes the holster out, which pushes the weapon in and evens things out for you and it actually makes it a lot more comfortable. Anyone who ever carries concealed for a period of time is going to know very quickly that it sucks. Most especially in this area right here, uh, the notches where your legs meet the, the pelvis get worn out really bad and you find yourself constantly having to move that holster around. Like I said earlier, I've shed enough weight now that I can actually I'm not sucking my gut in, guys. I'm not. I mean, this, it, it's a nice feeling to finally actually look in the mirror and see that my shoulders are just a little bit wider than my waist used to be because my gut used to just, you know, I used to just balloon out. But I'm still big. I still have a belly, which is why I put this foam at the bottom of the holster and it's made a world of difference and it means that I carry all the time. Um, that's what I need you guys and gals to remember. If your weapon is not on you, then it might as well be at home locked in the safe. If your mindset is, well, I've got it in my bag. Yeah, but your bag is right over there, and the bad guy is right here immediately, and you need to be able to do this and pull it and get on him. Well, it doesn't help you. Even if your bag is just six feet away from you, it doesn't help you. On you. Off body carry might as well be, you know, locked in the safe. On body concealed in a position of ready accessibility is where it needs to be. The last thing I'm going to leave you with is this. In the training environment, the student, in fact, I made a note on this. I want to read it so I, so I actually get it right for you guys. All right, uh, I put it down as a slice of wisdom. Most often when it comes to firearms training, the student tends to teach themselves by exposure and experience. When I lost my range, when I moved from where I used to live and I had this kind of thing on my property, um, I had to then depend on the kindness of friends and clearly I've had some very kind friends that have given me access to their land um, here and my buddy Doug in, uh, in McDonald, Tennessee. I also shoot there as well. When I lost my own range on property, I got this major wake-up call 
what it is to be everybody else. What it is to have to figure out where the heck am I going to go shoot. And what I have found is that just getting people in a permissive environment where you can actually draw from your holster, point the weapon, and fire more than one round per second. If I can get you in an environment where you can do that freely and not feel like some range master is going to go, oh, you need to stop firing so rapidly, son. One round per second or two seconds. No, no drawing from the holster. Put that gun down on the bench. Okay, that polite, gentrified shooting crap is how people get killed in gunfights because you fight the way you train. And if all you've got is a veal slot and a gun range to shoot at a piece of paper, you're not training. All you're doing is paying somebody money to discharge your firearm in a very slow and safe manner. It's worthless, guys. It is worthless. This is how you have to train. This is actually firearms training. And the student, when I get people in this environment, dude, they literally teach themselves. Because all I do is just sort of stand there and make sure that they don't hurt themselves. Because we've just taken the safeties off in their life, and now they're actually running back and forth with a gun, and they're stopping, and they're stabilizing, and they're shooting, and they're taking off again. It's like, woohoo! It's like a roller coaster. And all I'm really doing as an as a instructor is I'm just kind of standing there watching, making sure you're not doing anything completely dumb and hurting yourself and giving you a little bit of instruction here and there. Trust me guys, trust me. I've trained at a lot of places with a lot of people. You're given instruction, but the vast majority of those learning moments aren't because someone is telling you something. It's because someone told you a little piece of something and then you went and you did it. And you did it, and you did it, and you did it, and you started ingraining. And by the way, every time that you hit steel, every time that you hear that sound, your brain within 300 milliseconds, which is basically, if I remember correctly, it's the um, blink of the eye, the uh, the blink of the of the eyelid. The eyelid blinks and opens. That's 300 milliseconds. You've just committed that action to memory as success, and now you're in a better position to repeat that action in the future if you have to, all because you were shooting on steel. You can't shoot on steel in a gun range. They're not gonna allow it. You're gonna be drilling paper. Paper's worthless. The training environment, this type of training environment, is where you learn these things. And I want to share this with you guys. Um, come out and train with me, guys. Tier1Citizen.com, as always, I thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Get those guns out and practice. Have a good one.